Okay, so what is victorization? Let's have another look at the Strelen we wrote last time. Alright, wildcard plus plus. On every iteration of the loop, we just compare one byte to zero. No uh, clever tricks by the compiler here or anything. However, we have bigger registers than uh, just byte. We could use uh, integers, for example, and in fact, this is an implementation of Sterlen for some like weak arm that uses int32. And uh, it does some clever bit tricks with int32 to determine if there were any zeros in the middle. And presumably this is faster than doing, you know, four times a byte. However, integers are not very well designed for that. They're designed to be integers and not designed to be four bytes. There are special registers that are designed to consist of smaller, uh, you know, uh, numbers. Uh, they are available like and on any system that is uh, not like very, very embedded. Nowadays, you will have some. Uh, this register called vector or SIMD registers, and they vary in size from like 8 bytes to 64 bytes. Uh, in fact, I believe that uh, on any system that has any SIMD capabilities nowadays, you will have 16 bytes. Uh, this is why, for example, WebAssembly uh, targets 16 byte registers. Right, so um, WebAssembly has some SIMD capabilities nowadays, and those SIMD capabilities target assume 16 byte registers because it can be efficient, efficiently implemented on any platform where the browser will run. However, more modern processors will have wider registers, so like 32 bytes or 64 bytes, uh, and we'll have a lot of them. For example, uh, I heard that on some modern uh, uh, Intel processors, you can lift almost the entire L1 into uh, registers. Okay, given that, uh, you know, the hardware providers give us wider and wider registers, is wider always better? Well, it's better a lot of the time, this is why they do it, but sometimes it's not. The most common use case where it's not is when you hit the memory wall, right? Any at least standalone applications that don't depend on the outside world uh, will, uh, not be performing because either CPU is slower or because you're not getting the data from, mem uh, from memory fast enough. And uh, if you're not getting the data fast enough, speeding up the CPU will not help you. In fact, SIMD optimized program have this occur much more often because you pro produce uh, process data much faster, right? And so you're just not getting data fast enough. That's why some people who write seem to go to like uh, a crazy lens to uh, do computation instead of loading data if possible. Um, the second thing is uh, sometimes wider registers will have weaker capabilities than smaller registers. So for example, to process a 16 byte register, it will take me, you know, four instructions, but to do the same operation on 32 byte registers, or oh, that be, you know, eight instructions, right? So it's not necessarily going to be faster than doing two times 16 byte register. And finally, there's a problem of frequency scaling. Well, a fact of frequency scaling. Uh, some of the wider registers uh, and some of the operations on wider registers cannot be performed on the normal uh, clock cycle. And so the processor will be slower uh, we will slow itself down to perform these operations. Which is fine, you, on every iteration, on every operation you produce more data, but uh, this uh, still means that the speed up will not just be, you know, oh, my register is twice as wide, I'm producing data twice as fast. The reason I'm saying all this is to understand that CMD is an optimization. And CMD is a hardware optimization. It's hardware-related optimization, right? Many of the CMD experts are also hardware experts. Uh, uh, so what are we going to do about it? Well, we are going to measure. Uh, we are going to try to measure, so at least on my machine, uh, it shows us good results. And then we're going to try to be as generic as possible so that uh, we can tweak our solution for a specific machine we might encounter. Okay, and that's it for today.